Hi everyone, this is Veronica with So It Seems and welcome back. Today in our Dear Jane blocks, we are going to be working on block H9, also called Snowflake Melt. This is one of those blocks that looks to be different from what Jane originally made. I'm going to show you in the front of the book, actually the cover, you can see um, just the entire quilt here. Let me back up. You can see the quilt on one side and then on the back cover is the other half of the quilt. And oftentimes if I can't tell um, specifically how the block looks from just the photo or the drawing that Brenda Papadakis has done, I will look at the block in the layout of the quilt as best that I can. And it can be kind of difficult because these are small. When I look at this block, I'm finding it. It's right here. And I'm looking closely at this block. I even had my magnifying glass out. And I do not see an extra part added to this block other than the sashing that Jane did. Um, there might be just a little bit added on this side, um, possibly this side, but over here it just it looks like it's part of the sashing when you look how it lines up. So I am actually going to adjust this block just a little bit. So when we look at the drafting, what Brenda did was add some of what would be the muslin that I'm going to be using on the outer part of this little square in the middle. But that seems like some extra fiddly work to me. So what I'm actually going to do is a little more like what Jane did and extend the color to the end. Now that I know that I'm going to be adjusting this block just a little bit, let's take a look at kind of the breakdown of this. It can look a little confusing, but when I'm looking at this block here and taking out these little diamonds, what we have here is basically a pinwheel. And then the pinwheel is, instead of straight on, it's turned and cut on the diagonal and that's where we get this cut off part. And then these little diamonds are just applique on. And then we have these corners added on in our background fabric, um, similar to like a snowball block. So let's first get started with cutting fabric to make the pinwheel. The fabrics that I've chosen for this block today is this red fabric. This will be for my main focus fabric. And then I am going to pair that with my muslin for the background. To make a simple pinwheel block, I am first starting with two squares. Each of them cut four inches. So one square of my foundation fabric at four inches and one of my background fabric at four inches. These fabrics will be right sides together. And then I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all around the outer seam. I have marked my stitching line. So I'm going to stitch all along this edge, pivoting at each corner. I don't need to sew beyond each of these corners. I have a quarter inch seam sewn all the way around the edge of this fabric. I'm going to flip this over. You can see it a little bit better against the red. You can see my stitching line across there. And now we're going to cut this so that we can create our pinwheel. Take our ruler and you're going to cut di on the diagonal. So here's our first cut. Now being very careful not to shift anything, I'm going to turn my cutting mat so I'm at a better angle. And once again, lining up 
on the diagonal. And we're going to cut that diagonal. Now I have four pieces that have created my half square triangle. Let's press all of these pressing toward the dark so that your seam goes toward the dark side of your piece. I have four little units now created and now I need to turn these so that it's creating the pinwheel in the direction I need it to go. When I look at the block, this first piece here has the background fabric down here and then my color here. So then I just copy that around. So you can see the pinwheel is starting to maneuver. This one is already in place. And there you have it. You can see the beginnings of that pinwheel. I'm going to clip these little dog ears. Okay, the pinwheels are in place. I'm going to draw my quarter of an inch stitching line for each of these. And when you're working on your pinwheel, it's easiest to keep them in position so you don't get confused on which direction because it's very easy to get them turned the wrong way while you're working. The two adjacent squares are sewn together and I've pressed the seams. Make sure that when you're pressing these seams that you press them in opposite directions. So when I flip this over, you'll see my seams are pressed to this side on the bottom one and they're pressed to this side on the top one. What that does is it allows that your seams to nestle up to each other, especially in this center here, it's getting pretty bulky with all of the fabric. So now we're going to put our pieces together and we're going to sew this seam, nestling those seams right up next to each other and stitch that quarter of an inch. The center pinwheel block is now pressed and ready to be trimmed. Now to get the angle that Jane has on her block, I'm going to trim my pinwheel. With the ruler that comes along with the Dear Jane books, I'm going to line my ruler up. So normally you would have your ruler in this um, orientation, but I'm going to turn it so that my pinwheel is actually lining up just at this angle. So my center line is coming through the diagonal of the pinwheels. And I'm going to trim off these corners right here. There is a little bit of a bulk on the center where the seams are, so you just have to kind of be careful um, that your block, that the ruler doesn't shift around. And now we have this block trimmed. It will be sitting this way in the main block where we have um, on this side the muslin color, muslin color, muslin color, muslin color. Um, now what I'll do is get some muslin fabric and we're going to sew along these corner edges that muslin. For each of these triangles that I sewed onto the corners, I cut two squares that were two and a half inches and then cut them in half on the diagonal. So now I have them stitched on and I'm going to press them open. I have my block pressed open and it looks a little funny, but if I get my ruler and I put it over this block, you can see I've got plenty of room for trimming all around. Now before I trim this block, I'm going to now work on the applique diamonds that are in each of these muslin triangles. I've traced my diamond template onto the front of 
four pieces of the red fabric and this will give me my folding line for being able to stitch around when I do my applique. So I have the diamond uh, placed in position. I've pressed this side of the I've pressed this side of the edges down and the diamond I'm going to be having placed kind of evenly around so it just gives it a nice space around there. So we're going to applique each diamond into the muslin pieces that are coming around the pinwheel. The applique is all stitched down and the block has been pressed really well. Now it's ready to trim. To trim this block we just line up our ruler and we have all kinds of lines to line up. Our center cross lines here and our diagonal lines are going to follow across there. So now we'll just trim all the way around. And there is our finished block. This was a fun block to make and it's a fun one to try a little bit of fussy cutting that I did in these little diamonds here. If you have fabric that lends itself to that, go ahead and give that a try. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of making block H9 from the Dear Jane quilt, also called Snowflake Melt. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below, or you can send me an email at SoItSeemsCreations at Outlook.com. This is Veronica Johnson with So It Seems, and I'll see you next time.